Hey folks, so tonight I finally have what I think is a conclusion to all this spindle speed control stuff. Uh, I've got a playlist going on on YouTube already and I, judging by the number of views and watch time that those videos got, they're a little bit dry and I get it. It's hard to follow, you know, 10 or 15 minutes staring at a bunch of wires on a breadboard. I got it, but tonight I got something really cool for you. Check it out. So all the wires and everything have morphed into a actual custom printed circuit board. It is hooked up right now. It is running the spindle speed control on my little Sieg here. So let's get into how to set up this little board. So just so that we're starting with a fresh install, right now I've got the spindle commanded completely off. For starters, I went ahead and unhooked my spindle speed control board from the actual motor controller. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start a fresh install here. So everything's basically unhooked. Three wires here are going to be coming from your breakout board. You've got basically the power that's feeding the breakout board. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, your breakout board's right here. It's got main power on the left here, plus and minus. So that's coming into the board and powering everything that's going on. I'm tapping directly into that positive and ground. And that's what the five volts here, which can be actually higher than that. Five volts there and ground is the middle pin. So that's your breakout board, just raw power coming into that. Bottom one is your PWM signal. That's a pin that is programmed from the Linux CNC to go through one of these pins here. So I've got it set to, I believe it's this pin right here. And so that's your actual PWM output. So in summary, those three pins are basically power, ground, and a PWM signal from your breakout board. The bigger cord right here is an independent um, power supply. So right now I'm feeding it 24 volt DC off of this, and it's just plugged in below my bench. And then the two pins down here are the output, so it's going to be an analog signal and a ground and those are what's going to go to the actual motor controller. So you see here inside Linux C, this is the step config wizard. I've got pin 14 set to spindle PWM. When that is checked, it gives you another uh, window, I guess you could say, as you're toggling through the wizard, and that's the spindle window. So you can set your PWM rate, um, spindle speed one, spindle speed two, and the corresponding PWMs. So I set mine to zero and 4,000 RPM, and that's PWM zero, so that would be 0% PWM, and PWM two, which is one, which equates to 100% PWM. Cycles per revolution doesn't really matter unless you're doing feedback. So with that in the step config wizard, now you're outputting a PWM signal. Mine is pin 14 there. So now we can feed that into the board that I created. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you get this board is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that um, top signal potentiometer is turned all the way to the left. And you're gonna to want to turn your spindle, still spindle is not connected to anything, turn your spindle RPM in Linux CNC or Mach 3, whatever you're using to drive this, up to 100%. So now it's getting 100% signal through the PWM port and it's got power and ground from your breakout board. And then you're gonna to wanna to probe these two little test points. You got a test point negative, test point positive, TP1, or TP plus, TP minus. And with a multimeter, you're gonna to wanna to dial that in to about 1.3 volts. Don't exceed 1.4. So somewhere between 1.2 and 1.4 is what you're shooting for. Okay, so right there I've got 1.3 volts, 1.31. So it's good to go there. Now with it at spindle still at 100%, you've got your outputs here. You're gonna to wanna to just probe that, plus and minus. And you'll see right now, I've kinda of already been tinkering with this one, but it's putting out 12.2. The max on my motor controller is 12 volts. So I'm gonna use the other potentiometer just to dial that back a little bit. And it's a little touchier than the other one, so you kinda of gotta work it a little bit. So 12.2, 12.1, 11.9, 12.01, that should be good. Now with that, 
this is important, go ahead and kill your spindle in Linux CNC. Verify that this goes down to zero. And there you go, 0.1. And that's in millivolts actually, so that's like nothing. So we're good there. Now you're going to go ahead and connect. I've got it labeled as output. That's your actual like analog signal. You're gonna route that to your wiper where the potentiometer used to be. And then you've got ground. Okay. And then you should be good to go. And one good trick too is to actually run the spindle and watch your um, output and ground just to make sure that you're not exceeding any voltages as you go up. So that's max spindle voltage and it's 11.75. So it actually is a little lower than what we had with no load. So you can actually bring it up just a hair. There we go, that's right at 12.02. I'll probably bring that down a hair just because if you're running this thing all the time at max speed, you don't want to be right on the edge. So 11.9, that's about perfect with what I would want to run this at. And then we can kill it on Linux CNC. And she's dialed in. So to summarize that up a little bit, you've got a couple steps. They're all pretty simple. Pretty much you want to give the, the board power, ground, and a PWM signal all from the breakout board. You also want to give it... Um, it's got to be a voltage, you know, a couple of volts above what you're looking at. I've got a 24 volt DC input going into this connector right now. And I think max, if I crank that all the way up, I get like 20 volts out. So that's plenty. Um, you could probably get by on, if you're looking for 12 volts out with like an 18 volt input. And you'd be okay. But anyway, so you plug that in, plug these three in. Give your spindle on Linux CNC 100% or Mach 3, 100%. So make sure that the voltage between test point negative and test point plus is about 1.3, somewhere between 1.2 and 1.4. Don't exceed 1.4. Uh, adjust that with the signal potentiometer at the top. Once that's dialed in, go ahead and check your output and dial that in to something a little bit, to be on the safe side, a little bit below what your you want your output to be at 100%. Once that's good, uh, one thing I kind of didn't do a second ago is you should, to be safe, you should shut everything down. Plug in your ground from your output to the ground on your where your potentiometer used to go. Plug your output wire to where the wiper used to plug in on your motor controller. Um, turn that on, bring it up, kind of monitor these two to make sure they don't exceed the max analog voltage that your motor controller is designed for. Once it's at 100%, dial it in to exactly what you're looking for. And then you've got it. So what you saw there took me, you know, five minutes or so just to dial in. So it shouldn't be too bad and it should work on all your Sieg, Mills, Lays, um, all that kind of stuff. Any motor controller that is running off a potentiometer and just needs an analog um, voltage input. So if you're looking for one of these in the near future, I'm hoping to have them on the rivalmachining.com website in the store. So I'm looking at $35, including shipping anywhere in the continental United States. If you would like a power adapter, a 24 volt power adapter, they're an additional $5. Or if you just want a pigtail that plugs into that connector, they're an additional $250. So from there, you should be up and running. Um, you've got that bridge between your um, breakout board and your motor controller. So check it out. Thank you for watching.